Welcome everyone to the latest edition of Verde and Black. I'm Adrian Healy. Uh, first of all, I have to tell you Verde and Black is brought to you by Points Bets, founding partner of Austin FC, and also by Swish Dental, dental services for the whole family, 10 Austin locations. Really been looking forward to today's episode of our podcast for a long time. Actually, we've been trying to make this happen for a long, long time. Uh, my guest to my right is Sam Lawson. Um, Sam is the video performance analyst here at Austin FC. And Sam, you and I have been trying to get together for about six months. And, and yeah. finally, finally, it happens. It has. It's, it's been a long time coming, but I'm glad we've actually been able <laughs> to find time to do it. You're a tough man to pin down because there's a lot of video that needs a lot of an analysis. Um, it, for those of you who've been to a game at Q2 Stadium and glanced up on the west, uh, the west stands um, and looked up at the very top level where the, uh, where the broadcast booths are and lots of other booths, you may, have, um, you may have wondered who is up there. Well, myself and Michael LaHood are up there calling the game down one end, but just a few doors down from us and a few windows down from us sits Sam Lawson and, 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 and your assistant, Mac, assistant, Mac Orr. Yeah. Um, and uh, you are paying very close attention to what happens out on the field. You're, you're also filming it. In, in your own way, yes, um, not, not relying on those unreliable video <laughs> feeds provided by the TV companies and commentators who get in the way. But, but, so you're there every game, but that's only the very tip of the iceberg of, of what you do, Sam. So just for the layman out there, for the first the people uh, wondering what a video performance analyst does, how, how, how do you kind of describe your job for the club? Uh, we'll try and keep it brief, <laughs> but... Um, no, you don't have to do that. It's the beauty of the podcast. You go as long exactly. as you want. Uh, so for video performance analyst, we anything that's filmed is now broken down by us, by the coaches, to help the players as much as we can to prepare for the game, prepare for the next training session, and improve individually and as a team. So as you said, for games, we're there, we're watching the game, we're feeding information down to the coaches. Uh, is it the same as what we saw in the scouting report? Is it different? Mm. So it's kind of making sm those small adjustments that can hopefully we can see in the game feedback at halftime yeah. and then get ready for uh, the second half and yeah that's that's game day but the rest of the week we have four or five six game days of training yeah. and so each of those are filmed by either a drone or speedio around the, the facility and yeah we come in break those down Matt goes in with the coaches and they they sit down and break everything down for the next day mm. so it's a combination of um, in-game help to the coaching staff and then sort of during the week preparing for the for the next challenge yes um, yeah. I know those those are two very different things obviously that I, I, I'm actually more aware to be to be honest Sam with what you do during the week because I'm, I'm I've been the beneficiary of that too I've got to see some of the the great stuff you produce uh, for the for the team uh, I haven't seen what you produce during the game so I'm intrigued because we're up there calling a game and wondering you know trying to trying to look at maybe the same sort of things you are as a coach so so what sort of things can you can you help with actually during a game um, and, and 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 how do you actually manage to communicate that to the to, to the bench uh, so a lot of it it goes down to having myself uh, Mac my assistant and then uh, Nolan's up in the booth with us as yep. well uh, and so we We'll sit up there. Well, Mac is filming. We have the live feed straight into our laptop, and obviously Nolan and I know exactly what we want to do from a tactical standpoint, yeah. what we expect from the opposition. And so from there, it's looking out, seeing what we see, um, talking to Davey has the radio on the bench. So it's are they looking at different things on the bench, and they'll feed up to us to try and get different examples of different mm. shapes. Um, are the opposition doing something different to what we looked at in the scouting report? Yeah, and so it's just kind of small things from there, and then as we get closer to halftime, it's preparing the clips that we've seen and sent down to the bench, making sure they're kind of like the right lengths for mm. halftime and exactly what Josh is going to need. In the NFL, you see all the time guys sat there with <laughs> literally with pads looking yeah. at the last play. You can't do that in soccer, can you? Because they're 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 out there, they're not coming to the bench. But 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 what you do is the closest you can. Yeah, the equivalent absolutely. thing to soccer, yeah. Yeah, and we have we have two iPads on the bench. The coaches, uh, there's two iPads down there. One with a the live feed, one that gets uh, specific things like the set pieces, goals, yeah, um, different things like that. That we can then feed back down to them and say, okay, clip number four. This mm. is what we're showing. It's the team in this shape, uh, and kind of this is how we can now go about yeah. kind of exploiting that. 
And is that always, it, again, on game day, is that always more focused on what the opposition are doing? Or are you just as much focused on what we're doing or what we're not doing? Um, uh, yeah, very much so on uh, kind of what we're doing because as we go through the week, as you said, yeah. we've got um, video up on the TV. So we're in constant communication with the players, um, coaches, kind of we do everything on the field. So everything that we do kind of prepares the team of how we want to play on the Saturday. And yeah. so by the time we get to the Saturday, everyone should know their role what we want to do and again sometimes it's affected by what the opposition do but uh, yeah for a lot of it it's us our positioning how we can um, yeah. kind of be more systematic in breaking them down so if I asked you what your average week looks like I know it's a long one because <laughs> because, because of previous attempts to get you yes. in here and, and the hours involved so um, how soon after the end say say we just played Miami we beat Miami you you're you're on to preparing for Portland what does that week look like? And maybe that's not a typical week because it's a game on a sa uh, Sunday and then a Saturday. But but, you know, what what does your week look like from the from the moment that final whistle goes? And yeah, so the final whistle from Miami. It's again, we'll go through the Miami game again. Make sure the coaches and players have what they need from that game. Um, and then Portland is mostly done by the time we play Miami. Oh really? So okay. we'll have the last two three games already broken down. Some things ready to go for the coaches. So as soon as that's of the opponents. Of yeah. the opponents. Yeah. So we played Miami Sunday, uh, Monday morning. I had the last few games, some clips already built out, some of the basic information that they're going to want is already there ready for them. So when they're ready to move on, they can have that and take it and run with it. Mm. And so it's just the the last game from, uh, so for Portland coming up, they played Sunday night. So the first thing Monday morning, it's making sure that video is ready, mm. break it down, add that to all the databases, and then... From there, it's kind of work with the coaches, see what they need, and then it's yeah. start looking at Seattle. Well, and that's that's the next point. I was getting, you're, you're a pro, Sam. You just teed me up for the next question. I was interested in that dynamic between yourself and the coaching staff, because really, you know, to all intents and purposes, you are an extension of the coaching staff. You're, you're all about preparing the players. So how does that dynamic work uh, in terms of what you produce? Do they... Do they have a special request like does Josh come to you and say ah give me give me something on the on the Portland you know defensive alignment or midfield shape I mean or, or do you kind of take the initiative on that and present stuff to them uh, yeah or a bit it's, of both it's kind of developed over the the last year obviously the first season last year was very much a uh, very much a learning process everyone yeah. is kind of getting uh, all their philosophies and everything together and uh, last year we worked a lot more with Davey yep. on the scouting side and we would kind of watch some games together, collect the clips together and then we would go present it to uh, Josh and the rest of the coaches. This mm -hmm. year it's kind of a lot more in terms of they now know that I know what they're looking for, they right. trust me in the whole process. Yep. So a lot of it is I will prepare it. They're obviously going to watch all the games as well. But if I can get four or five games down to six, seven clips for yeah. each phase that we look at, it's going to make the process go so much quicker. So just like the year two from year one evolution in, in everything with this club, absolutely, it equally applies to, to your work as well. Right? Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. And we, we've seen developments in what we do. Uh, bringing Mac in last year, it's gonna, we were able to do so much more with, with training, with yeah. feedback, uh, especially on the scouting side with individual player scouting. Um, and so from there, we've just developed that even more this year. And it's something that, yeah, we always look to improve every single year. So, mm. so what makes a good video analyst, Sam? You, you're <laughs> one of the pioneers in this field. I mean, you've been doing it quite a long time, which we will get to. But, but yeah. uh, I'm um, sure they come in all shapes and sizes of personality, just that, like just like players do. do and coaches do. But, but yeah. what 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 do you what do you need to have? I think for me especially uh coming over here a lot of people hear that i'm a video analyst and they're like oh it's just a uh, like a stepping stone to become a coach yeah i was like no this is what i want to do this is my passion i love this side of the game and kind of seeing different uh different ways in terms of how teams play how different coaches uh, approach different areas and kind of going from there and just kind of breaking it down and then bringing it back to us and how we play and mm. everything that we want to do is how can we then kind of exploit, not necessarily their weaknesses, but how they want to play, because every formation, every system has its strengths and weaknesses. Mm. So it's just identifying those. And how do um, how do players 
respond to it? How do the, how do players respond to your work? I mean, is it is it? Uh, I'm sure sure it's across the board again, but uh. yeah, you definitely have some players who you know, like they're very focused on their own game. Sometimes yeah. they're not going to watch a lot of the scouting. Sometimes they don't watch them uh, like reflect on their own performances because they like to just move on and kind of go uh, to the next team uh, and the next game. But yeah, you see a lot more now the younger guys coming out of college. They're used to it, yeah? They're getting so much more used to it. So when I came over to the U.S. initially, I was one of the only analysts in the collegiate world. And now you see so many more universities and colleges with one analyst, maybe even two analysts now. And so when they come out of college, similar to how we're doing with our academy now, we're trying to get them ingrained in the video process. So when they make it to that next level, it's it's already there, it's already ready, and kind of they can then just continue developing it, 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 it's funny because I think we all remember this Josh actually referenced your work last year in won't name the player or the game we all remember what it was but he basically said listen there's all this video there for the players to use if yep. they'd, they'd actually looked at it they would have known what to expect from an opponent so, not saying any names you can read between no, the lines absolutely <laughs> yeah and and we could say it's a lot better this year and right. um yeah, the buy-in from the coaches last year was incredible. The buy-in from the players, and how Josh has said that the depth and the experience and uh, kind of like the level of players that we have this year has gone mm. to another level. So is the buy-in to how we want to play, how we do things week in, week out. And video is just another part of that. Yeah. Well, you have such a rich history, which I want to I get into. But before we do that, Sam, what what is the history of, of video analysis? Because, you know, in terms of scouting opponents, I'm old enough to remember a time when they you yeah you used to just send people to games and they would yeah. <laughs> they would type up a written report and that would be it. And managers had their had their sort of army of scouts working for them all over the country. So so uh, th I I can only imagine this this field has just kind of expanded exponentially in the last decade or so. I mean, is that is that fair to say, yeah. or does it go back longer than that? Uh -huh. No, it's probably yeah. It it would started probably about fifteen, fifteen, sixteen, maybe twenty years ago. When yeah. Obviously, you had actual tape that you would be cutting up and putting together for splicing. Yeah, absolutely. But um, yeah, when I first started, there was only a few uh, kind of like softwares and programs and companies kind of like getting into this yeah. space. And uh, Prozone was the first one that I worked with, and they were the big name at the time, and uh, they. They kind of introduced me to everything and kind of got me hooked in into everything that we did. Um, but yeah, now you look around and there's so many companies coming out with so many more yeah. things like the visualizations you see on kind of like Monday Night Football. We have the same back home in England with Sky yeah. Sports and like that wasn't even like, a thing. So I've talked to uh, I've talked to Josh Wolf about this and he says when he was a player under Bob Bradley, <laughs> same thing. It was it was VHS tapes and I think. I think Bradley was doing the splicing himself at this stage. Yeah. Like, watch, watch minute number three. <laughs> yeah, and when I first started, uh, I know we'll get into it in Ipswich Academy. We had a an old school uh, tape recorder. Yeah. So we had the tape, and then we had to put it into a different machine to get it onto DVD, and then from DVD into the uh, into the laptop, and then into the software. So yeah. And now we SD card, and it's there in two minutes. Well, fast forward to now, and one skill you haven't mentioned that I've seen you in action with a uh, big part of being a, a modern day video analyst how to fly a drone you're you're, you're like you're, you're you're out there during the week piloting these things and filming up above yeah how how, how how's that been i mean it, was that a skill you had to, i mean assuming you had to learn the skill of just straight filming yeah that's something i i learned when i got here and uh yeah until matt came in i was flying the drone every day at training and <laughs> And making sure I wasn't crashing it anywhere, but uh, now Max come in, he's he takes that over, and uh, yeah, drones have kind of changed the way, yeah. especially training analysis has done, just the complete different perspective, and you can go from behind the goal, from the side, depending on what activity you're doing, and it's yeah, yeah, and you fly, you you, you fly them at a height where it looks like a chessboard. I mean, I've seen plenty of the videos you you produce, and it's just uh, as you say, it's uh, I actually like to commentate from that angle. But it, it gives yeah. you a tactical perspective that you don't you don't get from your. It's kind of like that old the old football manager. Yeah. <laughs> when you have the just the dots moving around the. Just the field. <laughs> oh yes, indeed. Um, 
So talk us through your yeah your your history and how you became what you now are because you you have a very colourful like me. You're a Brit originally, but you didn't grow yeah. up in England, did you? You grew up no. in, uh, in in Germany. Yeah? Grew up in Germany with the British Army. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so both my parents were teachers, um, and so we didn't have the usual army lifestyle. We'd stayed in the same place for 16 years, which for me was great. Like friends would come and go, but then they'd also come back, which was which part of Germany was it? Uh, it was Paderborn. Okay. It's yeah, uh, yeah. northwest. So yeah. it's uh, it's it's a great great city if anyone gets to to visit. Was SC Paderborn? Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, we were there for 16 years, and obviously, an English kid, you always grow up and you want to play football or soccer professionally. Is yeah. Like that's all you want to do. Um, and then I moved back to England when I was 16, uh, right before my parents moved back. Um, and then university, I realized I wasn't going to be able to play professionally. So it was at that point, because normally, yeah, as like you and me, I, I knew by the age I was 14 that I was going to be too slow to play. Yeah. <laughs> Slow as molasses was the phrase uh, one one there coach used. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know early, don't you? When when it's yeah, yeah when you yeah and especially growing up in Germany because obviously the academy system in England, if you are going to be anyone, yeah. you're usually in academy by well, at this point probably five or six now. Yeah. Back then it was probably thirteen, fourteen. So, but I had a left foot which got me into a lot of teams. Yeah, That's, you could walk me into a lot both, of teams Sam. with a left foot. So. I think your left foot was probably better than mine, but. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I've, saw, I've seen you in the media game last year. <laughs> yeah, you were flying the drone for that media yeah, game. But yeah. That, 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 yeah, there was no trouble keeping up, that's for sure. <laughs> um, so what? Uh, so ha actually, interestingly, having grown up in Germany, did, were you watching German football as much as English football or, or football from around the world at that time? And uh, what was your kind of formative influence? Or, or it was really, uh, it was the Premier League. Yeah, for the most part, we would go to a few Bundesliga games yeah. here and there, um, especially when SA Paderborn were up yeah. in the Bundesliga. Yeah, yeah. Um, but a lot of it really was kind of match of the day highlights from back home. Uh, yeah, that's what made me a Newcastle fan because it was when Alan Shearer was yeah was banging in goals every week. So oh yes, it's <laughs> he was something special, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, so then, so then, at what point? So y your first kind of professional role was with Ipswich Town, big, big, mm -hmm. famous. Famous old club in England, the Tractor Boys, as yep, they're called. Indeed. How did how did that come into being, and, and what were you what were you doing for them? Uh, so we that was during a uh, university. We yeah. had a kind of careers lecture with one of our professors, and yeah. uh, I did sport and exercise science, and so it was kind of just talking about all the different jobs that we could go into, and um, they obviously with Ipswich Town being right there, we we talked about like different roles that we could have there, and. It was actually my professor at the time. He was like, oh, if anyone likes uh, kind of like the math side and analytics yeah. and still breaking down uh, like football games, it's there's something kind of coming to the forefront now is like performance analysis. Yeah. And so I was like, that sounds like my dream job. Yeah. Yeah. And so we talked to Ipswich and we got a, uh, the partnership started. I think that was the first year that it actually been uh, a part of their academy. And there was three, four, five of us. We would go down and help them every weekend, mm. film the games, take the video away, break it down, give them some yeah. statistical, uh, statistical yeah. uh, information to kind of give them some insight into the games that they'd never had before. Yeah, interesting. So that that video world and the data world were basically the same. Because I was going to ask you how 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 it intersects really uh, at, yeah. at a club like Austin. But yeah, back then it was uh, performance analysis, and you kind of you kind of had the dual role. Whereas now, it's kind of very much it's yeah. not split in terms of like the roles and the jobs that people do but there's still so much integration that we have and uh, that we have here now as well yeah um interesting really interesting next step in your life that i can't wait to hear about you went from ipswich town in lovely pastoral suffolk england and, the, and a club called the tractor boys to new zealand yeah. how does that happen <laughs> so that was a few different events happening at the same time um I graduated, yeah. um, and there wasn't a full-time role for me at Ipswich Town. Okay. And so I'd never had a gap year. Um, and my girlfriend at the time was from New Zealand, and yeah. she was going back. And I was like, why not? It was the perfect time for me to go experience uh, another part of the world, see what I can do over there. And when I found out where we were actually going in New Zealand, I, uh, I sort of found the local club, the local semi-pro yeah. club, and reached out and asked if they had anyone 
do anything like this before? And they said, no, but yeah. if you want to come and do it for free, we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> so I went there and uh, it was a, it was just shy of a year. Um, yeah. But it was probably one of the more rewarding um, experiences I've had because they had no budget, they had no mm. software. So it was more me actually going into the, the nitty gritty of everything and uh, pulling stuff out. And that was the yeah. first time I'd properly had sit down conversations with one of the coaches every week. Mm. And it was it was a great year. They made the playoffs for the first time in a few years. And uh, I mean, they really valued what we did and we found out a lot of things about the mm. team, specific players and yeah. No, yeah. Na great Napier, Napier City Rovers was Napier one of City the teams Rovers you were and, and Hawkes Bay United. Hawks Bay United. You still keep yeah. still keep tabs on their. Uh, I, on I their follow program? them on all the social medias. I'll I'll see when they when they're in the playoffs and nice what they do. Yeah, no, that's good. Fantastic. Yeah, I've uh, you know been been to Auckland and that and that is it mm -hmm. for New Zealand. Love to love to go back and see. It. Great great country. Um, and then from there, Sam, um, next step. An, I an increasingly, uh, an increasingly <laughs> interesting path you were cutting because you went from New Zealand to the University of Missouri. <laughs> so and if you'd asked not me many, back, not many have followed that path. No, if you'd asked me back then where Missouri was, I would not have been able to tell Mizzou. you. Mizzou. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you know, it's it's uh, slap bang in the center of the country, isn't it? So how, yep. so how, so so the University of Missouri, you uh, that was the first time you'd had the title director of performance analysis how yeah. uh, how did that come about again more <laughs> more just events falling into place yeah uh, it was coming like towards the end of my time in New Zealand and I knew obviously performance analysis was my passion and there was a few uh, different sites that advertised jobs around the world and that came up and I was like I could I could try America yeah and why not <laughs> and so I applied and yeah it was some interesting time for Skype interviews <laughs> I don't think that was Zoom back then. That was pre, yes, pre pre Zoom yeah, era. Yeah, it was like the the five a.m. Uh, five a.m. Yeah. Skype calls just to uh, interview, and I w it was two months. I was in New Zealand, and I went mm. back to England, got the visa. Two months later, I was in in Missouri. Amazing first first landing place in America. First first time you'd ever been to the states. First time in the states. Yeah. Wow. And everyone always laughs at my first meal in in the U.S., which, which was, was? Uh, Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> I went at eight p.m not knowing anything about it, what it was, what it's supposed to be. Um, <laughs> I was the only one in there, and I still had my proper English accent at that point. Yes. Right? And yeah. so we had some good conversations. Oh, I'm so. sure you were you were welcomed with open arms. Yeah. It w this was in Columbia, Missouri, that uh, Waffle yeah. House, yeah? Fantastic. Well, you set the bar high yeah. <laughs> in the culinary department. Um, and then so, so at Missouri, wha how, did that <clears throat> how did that kind of develop your – your career because it was the first time you'd had this title and working in college soccer everything kind of new 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 place new environment new new responsibility um and just you know talk us talk us through those those couple of years there uh anyone who's worked in college sports knows how crazy a time it is <laughs> yes. especially the soccer season you have two oh, yeah. games a week every week for close to three four months depending on the national championship tournament um but again, it's just something that developed my love for what I did. It was kind of my first time really integrated with a team uh, day to day, um, mm. doing video, filming games, feeding back to the coaches, being in all the video presentations. And it kind of really was the first time I'd used a lot of the software mm. um, like on a day to day basis, going from New Zealand where there's no budget to now American collegiate system where yeah. money sometimes is no object. Um, it's yeah it was a completely different world and something that kind of really just showed me that analysis was kind of where my future was and mm. kind of reinforced that was it a real eye opener to you that this whole you know cuz it's funny when you when you live outside of the country you don't really recognize what college sports is in this in this country no. do you and then when you suddenly in the middle of it must have been uh, an yeah. eye opener there was a few things definitely to get used to the substitution rules were different yes. everyone coming and going Help every yeah <laughs> then I'll never forget my first game. I, we were away in Memphis, and we finished the game, after, well, finished the 90 minutes, and it was 1-1. And so I started packing everything away. It's like, oh, we drew the game. Yeah. Let's go review the video. So I was halfway <laughs> unpacked, and then everyone started walking out to the field again. <laughs> what and are I you doing? Like, I turned to the other video guy. I was like, what's happening? It's yeah. like overtime. 
<laughs> and so he had to quickly explain to me what that was. And I was like, all right, right now I've got it. Now I've got it. I'm ready. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and it could be uh, – those overtimes can go on forever as well, can't they? Um, so you spent um, – Best part of three seasons, really, in, uh, in in Missouri, three three college soccer seasons, and then uh, Sam, a big big move. Um, your next employer was U.S. Soccer. So talk yeah. about talk about leaps and bounds. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. How uh, how did that unfold? Because um, you you came on board with U.S. Soccer as a technical videographer and scout to start off with, and then became an analyst as well. Um, yeah. Uh, a lot of that came down to who I know and mm. kind of the relationships I built and yep. people who knew um, kind of what I did and my background. Uh, there were a few other people from Mizzou who went into the Federation. And so thankfully I had the, the contacts there to uh, kind of give me the introduction. Yeah. And then uh, one of the first people I actually met in the U.S. Uh, was Stuart Mez, who at mm. the time worked for the company Prozone. He's now at uh, D.C. Um and he did some things with the women's national team because they used the same software. And so they kind of got talking. And when he left to go to D.C., he knew kind of I was getting ready to graduate yeah. and get ready to move on to the next step. And he told them, it's like, hey, this guy kind of knows what he's doing. Yeah. Like, give him a chance. And so they brought me in for a January camp uh, out in L.A. And at the end of that camp, they asked me to stay for the year. So nice. I was <laughs> like, absolutely. Right. I can't say no to this opportunity. Yeah. And, and as part of that first year with them that was 2016 and it was an olympic year and you got to go to rio as part of the team yeah that's a good experience yeah something i, I never thought probably didn't end the do. way the team wanted but but no and but from there like we developed a lot of the processes after the, that olympics because they'd obviously just won the world cup and so we came in and we were kind of looking at things that we could improve and then mm. from there we learned a lot of things about the processes about the players about the team and so from that, it kind of gave a big jumping, mm. uh, a big diving board for the next, uh, the next World Cup and the next, the next phase. Yep. And the next phase for you was your first MLS job, which was with Minnesota United, um, an organization I know very well, and and the coach Adrian Heath is a, is, a, is a great guy. I'm sure he was uh, part of you coming on board there. How uh, how yeah. was that experience up there with the loons? It was cold. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was a great experience. Again, it's something that's uh, kind of developed my my role, my understanding of the role. It's obviously going from college where it's a very condensed season yeah. to the national team where it's you're in camp for a few, maybe a couple weeks every month, and then you don't see people for a few weeks. <coughs> this was kind of like the first real proper seasonal uh, job that I had, and it's something that, again, working with the players yeah. uh, in the MLS, the highest league in America, it's – it was it was great a great mm. opportunity to get mm. and it, it's interesting that you joined them they weren't an expansion team at the time but they were midway through their second year so yep. um it must be interesting for you kind of thinking about the parallel the parallel paths i mean every club is different but every club faces the same sort of challenges as absolutely expansion teams and you already saw some of that i'm sure in, in minnesota yeah yeah, and there's, it's again, they didn't have uh, really an analyst or an analysis department there. So when I got there, it was a lot of kind of teaching the coaches of what analysis could be, uh, the different things that we could do, how we can look at it, how if can we use training film to influence mm. it? Because obviously you have one game a week, but mm. you have five, six training sessions a week. Yeah. So it's okay. What can we now do that they, as coaches on their own, couldn't do beforehand? Well, it's interesting to me, Sam, looking at the timeline, because memory serves Minnesota United struggled uh, in the pre-Sam Lawson era, <laughs> and then um, rather got it together after your arrival. Yeah, first half of your first year, maybe not so much, but first full year, first time first they made the playoffs. Year. Surely can't be a coincidence. I mean, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> if I asked Adrian Heath right now, what was the biggest factor in... Uh, We'll Minnesota see if he would say the year we'll, we'll give him a call after this and see what he says. <laughs> um, so, I, actually, I mean, you were with them, you know, for, for a period of you know, where they got better and better, mm -hmm. uh, 2019 to 2020, when they really should have made the MLS Cup in 2020. I'm sure, I, that's, I a, I'm sure that's a painful memory. <laughs> I started to believe, and then Seattle did the Seattle. Yes. Will Bruin did what he did every yeah. single time. Um, so, talk us through uh, end of that year, um, obviously – 
2020 was such a strange year in many many ways but yeah austin are coming in to start life in in, in 2021 um i it, i've talked to josh about how he how he kind of built the team and 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 how he kind of recruited you but from your perspective what did it look like what did you see happening in austin and why uh, why did it look so so attractive for coming from a club that were already quite successful yeah um, um i think a lot of it was kind of knowing of josh obviously we hadn't worked together he was on the men's side i was on the women's side of the the federation but knowing of him kind yeah. of talking to a few people the level of detail that he went into um and kind of looking at the club from the outside like starting with the academy before the first team had even started a season that's something that i looked at and said okay it seems like they're doing this the right way mm. they're building from the ground up and uh and yeah i just kind of talked to josh um i don't know if it was an interview or just a conversation <laughs> but we we talked for uh, an hour just kind of comparing what we'd done like our, our yeah. path to where we were kind of how we did things in minnesota versus uh kind of what he was looking at doing here in austin and yeah. we had a, a great conversation it was really open it was honest and uh from there it was kind of i didn't know he was going to offer me the job yeah. and then uh from there it was yeah it was yeah. a no-brainer for me to come here listening to a lot of the other things that were going on around the city and the club and who else they were hiring it was just kind of yeah it seemed to be everything was going in the right direction yeah yeah I, was there a transfer fee involved did we have to give up a draft pick to get uh, Sam Ho Wilson? hopefully not for me <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure a few of the other I'm sure stuff, there was there some might gam there must be some gam there's always yeah. some gam involved <laughs> had to be um so uh i'm sure adrian deep was not not too happy to lose you but um but but he he you were january 21 you you, you make it it's part of uh yeah part of the first boots on the ground almost from the from the from the uh the playing what was what was that initial experience like for you last year a coming to austin a new city a fabulous city to live but also with this you know with this club sort of literally being born and you being a big part of it yeah uh yeah i mean other than it snowing the second day i was here <laughs> oh I yeah left oh, you, Minnesota time, you to time that well snow yeah. and <laughs> and then I come here and it snows. I was promised sun. Um, yeah. But no, it was sure you got blamed for that as well, didn't you? Absolutely. I did. I did for sure. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, it was great to be here from the start, as you said, with Minnesota. I came in halfway through their second year, so I didn't get to see the yeah. whole, the whole process. But from here, it was just such a great experience from the beginning, having like me coming from Minnesota, Josh from the national team. Mm -hmm. You got Davey from Houston, Nolan from DC, Preston from Red Bulls, and Rodrigo from Atlanta. It's yeah. there's so many different perspectives coming in, and obviously it's Josh's vision for the way he wants to play and the way, uh, like the structure that we have now. Mm. But to get uh, the opinions and kind of the ideas from so many different people and different perspectives, like we had many many hours of conversations yeah. just about so many different things and. Just to be able to start not only the analysis tomorrow, but the team and the philosophies and everything going into everything, it was it was great to be a part of. And yeah, now the performances this year, even the performances last year, we didn't always get the goals. But most of the analysts I talked to last year when we went to play them, he's like, "I love scouting you guys. Mm. We love how you play. Like you have such a defined style, yeah. and it's free flowing. And when you guys get it together, it's like incredible to watch." And yeah. So, like hearing things like that from other analysts around the league is it's pretty, pretty gratifying. Great, yeah. the, the coaching staff and the players would say the same thing. <laughs> like they'd always been, yeah, they always have opponents congratulating on them on how they were playing, and they were like, ah, it doesn't mean anything if we can't win. Yes, it's it's exactly. nice, it's nice to hear. But um, from your perspective, how have you, how have you seen um, have you seen the club develop as a, as an entire entity through? through year one into into the year one off season into this postseason and now into the start of of year two you've seen this 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 progression now we we all have our own viewpoints on it i'm just wondering from your from your video performance perspective um what what you yeah. see i'm just intrigued i mean you see a lot of the a lot of josh's identity and the way he wants to play I mean, you can see it coming a lot more into the way the guys play and especially from kind of like the end of last year to the beginning of this year. Mm. Like you see some players come back in with like their mentality has changed. Their understanding of what we want has completely changed. And 
uh, I won't name any names, but there's been like some players who I've changed my mind on completely. Yeah. In terms yeah. of like, oh, they could get the start. Mm. Like because the way they've come in, the way they've approached everything, and it kind of goes back to what Josh has said about the the team and like the the maturity level, the mm. level of of play. Everything's just developed from the beginning, mm. and it's now up to a level where if we were to put two teams out in the field, mm. you'd be pretty comfortable with, with both of them going yeah. after it. That's what it feels like. It feels like just, just that just that depth, number of options, number of players you now have to monitor who could seriously contribute is, is just way higher. Yeah, and that's what, that's kind of, we talked about this, uh, I think right before the Cincinnati game, is like now we have to have conversations of who we leave out of the 20. Yes. Whereas last year it was, okay, who do we need to fill a spot? Right. This year, as you said, we've got so much depth that like, it, the conversations are changing. Yeah. Like the, the whole like, environment and atmosphere around this training facility has changed because we know we have the depth and the comfort, the comfort level. Mm. Describe um, Sebastian Driussi from a, from, a, uh, from a video analyst point of view. What do you see? And uh, obviously, he's yeah, he's he's he's, he's a very he's special player, and yeah. and we're 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 lucky to have him. But do you see him when you analyze what he does? What 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 do you see from your from your lens and perspective? I think I mean everyone sees the the great things that he does, but it's the the work rate mm. off the ball that yeah sometimes goes underappreciated, and that's something that we've talked about so many times, like with him and uh, Aruti up top, like the way they come back and back press. Mm. It's like to their change of speed to then go and initiate the press. Mm. Uh, it's something that you see like around the, the league with other like DPs or like big names. Mm. It's like they have the big names, they're able to do like very special things, but they don't always have the work ethic mm. that he has. And that's something that I think when he came in last year, it changed the team. Mm. His work ethic out in training every single day to then go <coughs> onto the field and do it. Mm. It just kind of raises everyone else's level and expectations and. I think that's been a big part of what's changed this year. It's funny, I remember Claudio saying exactly the same thing. Claudio Reyna, shortly after he signed him, he's like, first thing he mentioned was his, was his work rate. Like, yeah. not, normally, not normally something that you would think about right off the bat. It's like, well, how, how, no. how hard does he work? But and that's the other thing, like the analytical side of everything. Everyone sees the, the nutmegs he gets on the mm. field, like yeah. the nice finishes he has, but for the, uh, his first goal mm. against Miami, he started our own defending third. Mm. He turned and played the ball out, and then by the end of it, he was getting on the end of it in the, in, in the opposition's box. So mm. it's like things like that, that that we'll see, like just the runs, the effort that he gets to get there mm. because he wants to score. Yeah, He wants to set it up for everyone else. And that's the other thing. He's so unselfish. He's selfless, mm. like in and around the box. He's not just looking for the glory for himself. He's, okay, if someone's in a better position, they're getting the ball. Mm. So you haven't been surprised by this. Start no, no. Starts <laughs> a year two at all. Right? It's all. It's all been planned. Yeah, but absolutely. as you, as you mentioned, we saw the saw the seeds of it being sown second half of last year. Yeah. I mean, Claudio himself would always say, "I like a lot of what I'm seeing." It must have been, it must have been frustrating knowing knowing you had something. It wasn't quite. Yeah, and that's you know we had so many conversations around that, and after every single game, we'd do the game review, and there would always be positives that we take from every single game. But then even now with the five nil and the five one. There's things that we're still improving every yeah. day, and there's things that, as coaches, like again, things we feed back during the mm. game for the second half, or it's after the game for the next week. There's always things that we're that we're looking at to improve, and yeah, uh, yeah. Hopefully, we'll we'll keep on this track. It's gonna be great to see how the <laughs> how the team does on the road. That's that's yeah. that's, that's that's the next frontier, isn't it? It's like yeah, absolutely, which I'm sure you're preparing for, and I'm sure you've got to. You got it. I won't keep you much longer actually, because I know I know there's a Timbers video that you're uh, you're looking at. For those of you, or whenever you're watching or viewing this por- podcast, we're we're um, four days out from the from the Portland Timbers game, and I'm sure um, I, I you know I I've seen a lot of your work, Sam. I'm, I'm lucky enough to be able to view some of it, and it's it's really really something else the way you uh, the way you break down opposing teams. Yeah. Um, I you know I don't know if you think you just do it your own way and other video analysts do it another way it, it, or if there's an industry standard but what you bring is is pretty special yeah so. no it's it's great and we're trying to we're finding that now more and more through the league we, we have a analyst group chat and we have side chats with uh, is everyone pretty close yeah 
yeah and we uh, we have people reach out to us we're like hey how do you do this mm. and it's like okay your opposition this week but i'll tell you next week yeah. but it's uh like we're all there to help each other out and <laughs> and like even some of the software companies that we work with now they're yeah. sending teams to us to be like okay austin are doing it the right way yeah. we're leading how uh, some teams do analysis and kind of what we have in the stadium in terms of the different angles the coaches are able to get live it's it's that and they're now sending teams to us which seems crazy as we're a second year team but right. again it's just it's a testament to the yeah. people josh has brought in and claudio's brought in and kind of everyone is fantastic at their job and uh yeah we just go about what we do in a in a league like mls or, or any major league are there really any secrets or surprises i mean it's 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 funny isn't it like information is very closely guarded but but every team sees every other team play i mean yeah. but yeah. are there still there, there's still some secrets yeah uh yeah every team will play a slightly different way and yeah like if they again teams that came to play us last year would come and they'll change their formation right just because of the way that yeah. we play and so it's kind of san jose on opening night of the stadium exactly that, that was a bit of a surprise wasn't it? so and it's just going into the games you know what to expect from all these different teams but you never know what they're thinking about you yeah because as much as we're analyzing them they're analyzing us and so it's we can then just start to think about what they're going to prepare for us and kind of what changes they might make and then it goes into another another level that we have hours long conversations about in right. the office well i'm gonna let you go sam but not before i i, I wish your knee uh, a continued speedy recovery thank you you were an acl yeah. was it acl or mcl you uh, did, acl you did. oh how did you do that by the way how does a video analyst do his do his acl uh, sam for those of you who haven't seen has been walking around with a with a knee brace until very recently he's got the got the brace yeah. off now we're doing, we're doing well uh progress is going well um yeah. but no we um yeah, it was an indoor league yeah it was the day after a game so i hadn't slept a whole lot <laughs> and i looking back at it now i regret playing but uh i <laughs> felt good at the time and yeah just one of those indoor oh, indoor turf and those indoor in injuries are the worst yeah i've seen too many old guys go down. not calling you old but too many old guys go down <laughs> get not non-contact injuries yeah um, but yeah it was the day before we flew to poland and so the oh first lovely. two first two thoughts was i gotta get on a plane for four hours tomorrow <laughs> and then it was i can't run through the stadium tomorrow <laughs> yeah <laughs> well but and no. here we are here we are on the verge of going back to portland and you uh, you're almost you're almost back to yeah. uh, to fighting fit we won't tell the medical staff but we'll we'll get down the stairs quickly <laughs> hey sam thanks ever so much for uh, for coming by and uh, jumping on verde and black glad we glad we finally got to make this Me happen too. The one and only Sam Lawson, everyone, uh, Austin FC's video performance analyst and a big part of uh, the uh, surge in season two. And let's call it a surge and let's keep it that way. Let's do it. All right. See you next time on, on Verde and Black.